Welcome back to Site Tech Under Mountain SiteWorks training videos. In this video today, I want to show you a feature while you're doing your site calibrations called Move Base. What this feature does is it gives you the ability to move your base station during a calibration. Why would you want to do that? Well, I can give you many, many different examples myself. One example for me is we have a job site right here that we need to do some additions to a building that's already here. And you can see we've got a lot of concrete structures in the area. Uh, my calibration points are all the way around this building and it's on the other side is actually not terribly far. On the other side of this structure uh, where my other control points are is really not very far. It's probably less than half a mile. So the distance isn't the issue. It's the concrete structures. I've got an airport in the area and I've already tested and I know that the, the signal doesn't match the other side. So this gives you the ability for, let's say, canyons. If you have a job site working up a canyon, you can always use repeaters. That's what I used to do in all the many calibrations that I've done. Is you, I used to set a base up and then if I needed signal on either end or wherever I needed or down in a hole, around a corner, I'd usually use repeaters. And there's really nothing wrong with that. But I just wanted to show you a feature called Move Base. In this scenario, I don't want to send corrections longer. When you use a repeater, they're good to boost the signal, but you're still having your base on one end of the job site. So you're getting late corrections. So the Move Base is really handy so that you can have your base in different areas as you do it to where you have short corrections and good corrections is what I call it. And I've always said with site calibrations, you always want to take a little extra time. You want to make sure your bubbles are on. You want to face the same direction. It's one thing you don't want to screw up at the very beginning. But just a couple of scenarios, like I said, one is a canyon. You could have your base on one end, do a whole bunch of control points, and then move the base to another pole up the canyon where you need signal up there. You could use it for buildings like this. You could use it for um, where you've got up high and then you've got way down low where the signal kind of umbrellas or blocks out. Um, I've even had job sites in the middle of the valley here in Salt Lake that are only like three miles long, which you'd think with the high gain antenna, it would make it and it should, but there's just so much interference. People's Wi-Fi's, power lines, airports, whatever it is, it degrades that signal. So this video is to show you how you can do a site calibration. Now this one that I picked here isn't a large job site. I've only got five control points, but I do know that the cell or the excuse me, the base signal actually struggles from each end of this job site. So what I've done here is I know that on this end of the job site I've got one, two, three and a fourth one all the way on the other corner but i want to cover this end of the job so i've set my base station up over here and as you can see i don't have it on an actual known control point or a point that i've measured because when you start the move base feature option you're going to start your calibration with where the base is and then it's going to have you move to where another base pole is and you're gonna measure that in. And it's actually at the very end when it's done with the calibration, gonna ask you the same question, do you wanna save your base location? But it's not gonna save the one that I'm starting with, it's gonna save my last base location and it'll adjust that. I've played with this a little bit. I know what you're thinking is, okay, if I measure in a control point halfway through the calibration, how do I know at the end after I hit more calibration points that it's not moved? Well, it does. It does adjust. It's an evolve, an evolution, if you will, the calibration. It's always changing. So it'll record a northern easting so that you can move the base there. But then as you finish the calibration and say yes at the end, it'll adjust that northern easting elevation or easting northern whatever order you're on. So I've already set my base up. I've already got my job site ready. So my base station is already set. I've already loaded the project. The project's ready to go. I've already hooked up my rover to it. And I'm to that point here where it says, do you want to, rover setup is complete. Do you want to start the calibration? Yeah, just like any other calibration, go ahead and hit yes. And you can see right there, if you're using SiteWorks, that we're traditionally hitting the plus button right there and starting. And that move base option is right there. One other thing to this is you have to hit at least three control points before to let you move. If you just hit one or two and then hit move, it'll keep telling you that there's no residuals yet. So you need to hit three control points at least as a minimum, then you can move. So let's go ahead and go through the process and I'll show you this. So for my first control point here, I'm not necessarily doing it in a particular order. I'm leveled up. We're just going to go through this process just like we normally would. I'm going to measure this control point, CP1002. Okay, so one down. We're just going to move on to the other ones. 
So I'm gonna level up on my second point here. Always make sure to take a little extra time, make sure your bubble is calibrated and that you're actually right on. So we'll hit plus and I'm gonna go ahead and hit my next one. It already kinda knows which one I'm on. Go ahead and hit start. We're gonna hit that for 15 seconds. You can see my residuals are really good because the base station is still just behind us, probably about five or 600 feet. We'll do this one and hit one more behind us and then I'll show you the move the base feature after we've at least hit three points. Okay, so let's move on. Okay, so this is my third control point. The base station that I have set up temporarily right now is way down on the end of this building. What we're gonna do is measure in this point and then what I'm gonna do is take the base way down past that blue sign. That's where my next base pole is gonna be. But before I actually move the base, so let's go ahead and measure this third one in. 1004, do this one for 15 seconds. I always keep my hand on it in case it's windy or something vibrates it or it blows over. So keep it nice and steady. So after my third control point, now I have current residuals. I've got my horizontal and vertical, it's looking really good. Now I can hit the move base option. So if I tap move base, it basically walks you through exactly what to do. Number one, use the rover to measure the new base location, then move the base to a new location, set up the base at the new location, and set up the rover and resume calibration. So step one, we're gonna go ahead and tear down and run down where that next pole is, and then we'll hit accept and it'll let us measure in the next pole. All right, so here's my next base location. We've moved all the way across to this side of the job site. I've got a pole set up, put the rover on here. On this number one step here, move it to a new location and hit accept. Since the first one, it's not gonna save, it's not gonna remember that base location that I did, I'm gonna call this one the Site Tech Base. Go ahead and hit accept. And then same thing, you can go ahead and measure this. But I gotta caution you right here, you gotta pay attention to your vertical height. I've actually done this one wrong. You gotta make sure that you've got the settings right. So bottom of quick release, no, I've taken my quick release off. So just go through all the steps and make sure. And then vertical height, I'm not associating any elevation down here, but it still thinks I've got my rod height then. So I gotta make sure I put that up to zero. So once I've done that, I'm gonna measure in this new base pole point as a control point that we can move the base over to and then resume the calibration. As soon as this finishes, it gets to 15 seconds, it's basically gonna tell me what to do next. It's pretty straightforward. Move the base to the measured location and prepare to set up the base at this location. When you go to move the base, don't leave the base on while you move it. Go ahead and power the base down, and then when you bring it over and set it up here, power the base up so it's not trying to get a position while you move it over here. So we'll go to that step. Okay, so I've retrieved the base from where it was at previously, and then I set it up right here, powered it on, let it catch up enough satellites, and it automatically on this next screen comes to receiver setup, it already has the base, the R750, basically everything is there, ready to go. All you do is hit accept to connect to it. And there's the info panel. So once the base has been moved and you hit OK and accept for the base position, it'll connect, go through that whole process. And then there's my new base, base lat long. The base uh, site tech base is the name right there and we're good to go. So now we can hit OK on the info. So then it'll say uh, instructions, reconnect the controller to the rover and prepare to resume the calibration. So hit OK. And then this is all set up already right here. You go ahead and change this. Now the only thing I am going to say right here is you'll notice right there that where it says using quick release, it was no, and that's because when I measured in this point, I had changed that to no. So make sure right here that you go ahead and change that back to yes. And then I'm not using a tilt compensator because it doesn't like that when you're doing a site calibration. So now we're right back to the project calibration. We're resuming back from where we're at. I got my same tolerances and we're good to go. So let's go ahead and finish the calibration out. So here's my first control point since I moved the base which is actually right close to where I already, which is right close to where we just set it up. So here's my fourth point in the calibration. Go ahead and hit that. One more thing to notice when I went back to my next screen, which is the one you, before you hit start, is bottom of antenna is still set. It still saved the information from when I recorded that point over there. And this one will catch you, catch you if you just power through the screen and not pay attention. So right there, I need to change that back to bottom of quick release 
and I need to put my 6.562 for my rod height in here, or two meters. If I hadn't even paid attention to that and hit this control point, it would have warned me because my calibration would have been out. I would have seen it instantly in my, my numbers, and I could have then changed it, re-hit re this point. But just so you know, that, that'll catch you. It's, it's saving those inf that information from every time you set up and measure different points. So we're still in good tolerance. I've got one more control point up around the corner. So let's go hit that and then we'll be done. All right, so here's my very last control point. It's my control point 1001 set up on that. Let's go ahead and level up on top of this. Keep facing the same way and let's see how tight this calibration is after moving the base. So we're good there. Hit my plus, my 1001. Hit start, let that go for 15 seconds and we'll see how we look. Okay, so we look really, really good. My horizontal is uh, only a hundredth. My vertical is only a hundredth, so a very, very tight calibration. And this was the move the base. Now, you'll notice here that you can continue to hit move base. So if you hit move base, you can continue to do the same exact thing. So I only moved it one time for the distance I need, but if you had a really long project, like I said earlier, or you had a canyon or somewhere where you needed to move it a couple different times, you could move it. I haven't tried out how many times you can move it personally, but you can continue to do that. But I only did it once. Calibration is good. I'm gonna go ahead and hit finish. Yes, accept calibration, calibration complete. And then the infamous question, do you wanna save the base location? Yes, 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 yes. I say it to everybody, no matter what, who cares? Just say yes to that every time. And what it'll do is on my screen here, you'll see if I zoom out and I come back down by 2000, or excuse me, 1001 and three, that's where I originally had the base when we started up. There is no control point there. It didn't save that first one. That was just a temporary one. You remember I had it on the ground, no point actually marked or anything. And then over here, right next to my control point 1000, there is my site tech base. So hopefully this helps. I appreciate you watching. Hopefully this will help you in the future to understand keeping your base closer to you is more accurate sometimes than doing the repeaters, double repeaters, triple repeaters. It's not way great because the base is sending such a late signal to you, latency. So this might help out. Hopefully it does for any of you. Uh, my name is Jeff Larson, Site Tech Intermountain, SiteWorks training videos on moving a base during a site calibration. Thanks.